So polytune sequence or sec. Um, I've made to demonstrate something which is um, doing exactly the same uh, as what I've just shown you. It's running through some tables and it's choosing certain notes um, and uh, and routing them. It's a bit more complicated, but the engine, the fundamental engine, is the same. <clears throat> so what does it do? Um, well, uh, um, what have I suggested that you do? Turn, first of all, I'll, I'll run through this in turn just as it tells me to. Turn on the metro and then turn on each of the voices in turn, noting the different channels and the instruments. OK, so if I turn this on, nothing happens. Um, what we're using, uh, so I need to turn the voices on. <coughs> and uh, because make, uh, note out one, uh, this note out is running to channel one, PGM out here is also being routed to channel one, and at the beginning of the patch I've used this object, which is a load bang, um, and that probably is self-explanatory. It sends a bang when the patch loads in order to trigger all of these message boxes. So that's quite a useful object to know. Um, so anything you want to initialize at the beginning of a patch, you use what's called a load bang in order to do that. Um, so it's triggering this or sending this message which has a 12 on it, so we're getting a um, what is a sort of glockenspiel sound, or probably vibraphone, I don't know, something like that. <coughs> um, and it's running through a sequence, and that sequence happens to be tune 1. Well, what is tune 1? Well, tune 1 is referring to, I'll talk about what this patch object is in a minute, it's referring to this table over here. Now, this is a table, not an eye table. We looked at the eye table, which is a kind of, has a graphical front end, and so you see the table on the screen. This is exactly the same thing, but it's housed within what is a more kind of generic object. Um, and it's called Tune 2. And if I double click on that, just like the call object, it will come up with its contents, which in this case is, just as we had before, counting between 0 and 15. You could uh, have made it one that counted between 0 and 31 to give you a 32-bit sequencer. It's really up to you. Um, and similarly, we have um, a... Uh, uh, the note numbers from C to G sharp. G sharp is being ignored, as you will see in a minute, um, and that is our rest. Um, <clears throat> so that's what's happening. It's referring to that one. And in fact, if I turn on the other voices, they're all referring to different instruments, hence one being sent to program. So this is channel two, channel three, and channel four are get all getting different instruments. they're all referring still to tune number one. So I've got this extra button down here which says turn changes on and off. So if I turn those on, actually I'll leave the first one as it is at the moment and turn the other ones on. <coughs> and you can see what's happening. Um, what's coming out of the right hand side here um, is telling us which tunes it's referring to. So all of these tables have different tunes in them. Um, and uh, you can see that tune 2 has a bunch of rests in it. It's got stuff on the top row, just because that's how I determined it should be. Um, and tune 3 is a different tune again. Uh, I don't know why it's popped up up there, but anyway. Um, so I'm just going to turn it off for the time being. Um, <clears throat> so another, another again, check time, fine. This patcher object, well, what's a patcher? Well, a patcher allows you to make a patch within a patch. So if I double click on this one, it comes up with another patch. Um, and it's called voice. And the fact that it's in square brackets uh, denotes that it is a patch within a patch. So it's a sub patch, if you like. Um, and here we've got a few more workings, which, uh, because I've put in loads of text to explain what's going on, looks very cluttered, but in fact it's, it's, not, it's not too bad. What we have is two gates, and you can see that these brown objects here are inlets, so they refer to the first inlet, which is over here, the second inlet, which is here, and the third inlet, which is there, if you could follow the mouse movements there. Um, and the gate um, is allowing me to 
send, because the metro object is going into the, or well, the counter count from the metro object is going on the right hand side, it's going into inlet 3, which is basically, um, uh, well, this, this um, gate is being uh, controlled. So uh, the, the beat number, if you like, comes through there and it either allowed through or it is not by virtue of the fact that we've got this toggle, which is turn the voices on and off, going to the, to the uh, left hand side of that. Um, so that gate is, is controlling whether we get anything out of there going into the table and reading through the table. <coughs> um, and uh, yeah, and then that's reading through a table, which is here. Um, and and then you notice select 20, select 20 this time because we only because number 20 happens to be G sharp, um, and then ignoring anything that is 20, and uh, accepting anything that isn't, that's running through a plus 60 object, and um, we get um, a tune out, so whatever is in the table. But you notice this table is only labelled table, it doesn't have a name after it, um, and that's because... Uh, we are referring to one of these other tables that is over here by name. So if I send it the name tune one, table here will refer to that table. If I send it uh, refer ta uh, tune two, it will refer to table tune two that's over here. Um, so how do I? How am I telling it which which tune to refer to? Well, that's what's happening over here. So <clears throat> the second inlet, which if you remember, is the one for the toggle which turns changes on and off, is allowing our count into this gate and either through or not if it's not turned on. That goes into a select one object, which if you remember from what we've looked at before, here I'm using it to essentially count bars. I'm using it to determine the first beat of each bar. And on the first beat of each bar is when we want to change the tune. So sends a bang on each on beat one of sixteen. Then this section here is to tune choose a tune table at random. So we have our random uh, we have twelve twelve available uh, tables, as you can see from that, um, and we need to add one to the output of random if you remember because random would otherwise output zero to, to eleven, one less than the number it's got in as its argument. And then we have a col here, and col contains tune one, tune two, tune three, and so on. Um, <clears throat> so we have all of our tunes in there, or at least the names of our tunes in there, which we can refer to. That comes out. Ignore this root symbol for the time being. For some reason, call when it receives, um, when it's outputting a symbol, it will prefix it with symbol and then the name of whatever it is that you've sent out. So I'm using a root to uh, to deal with that. Uh, root is uh, root is essentially a select object, but uh, on the basis of what it receives, it will either root things out or not. Uh, don't worry too much about that. Um, but essentially, we can we can pretend that the tune one, tune two, tune three, whatever is selected from here, is goes into the refer object. That's what tells it what it tells this table what to refer to. Um, and so we change our table. The beat comes in through here um, and reads through the table, and we get our output. So have a, have a look through this. Um, and of course, all of these are duplicated, so they all behave exactly the same. Oh, I haven't got, yeah, I've got a few, few minutes left. Uh, what else shall I say? Not much. Um, well, we can listen to a bit more of it. But uh, hopefully this, this makes sense. And um, OK, aside from being a bit irritating after a while, it does allow me to create some fairly interesting and complex polyphony based on... Um, based on a series of tunes which I've con contrived to be, uh, to work reasonably well together. Um, um, yeah, so if we don't want uh, our kind of passacalia that we've got in, in the first item here, i.e. it's kind of a thing that just repeats incessantly with other stuff going on over the top, uh, it's a slight, slight misnomer, but anyway, um, we can click on that one and it will... We will always have completely different textures coming out. But it, again, it's all the same, pretty much the same model as we've, we've just looked at. So that's quite enough of that.